finally, a pocket-sized 8K360 camera from Insta360. The X4 is here and is packed with new features, while also sharing quite a lot of features with the previous generation, the X3. So in this video, I'll share my honest and unbiased opinion of the X4. I'll analyze just how good the 8K quality really is and ultimately help you decide whether you should buy it or not. Here it is up close and you've probably noticed that it looks identical to the X3. Since the X3 already had a great design, Insta360 knew not to change too much. However, there were some small changes like the body is slightly thicker on the X4. It's also a little bit taller and a few grams heavier. However, it's still not that heavy. On the back, they've added this nice texture which makes it feel like a premium camera and is extra satisfying to touch. The side of the camera is just like the X3 where you have your USB-C charging port here at the top. Then underneath that, you'll find the battery compartment and in the battery compartment is your micro SD slot. And the battery has been upgraded to 2290mAh, which should last you a few hours of shooting and is an upgrade from the X3. Here we have the on button and quick settings button. Then there's a speaker and microphone built in above. There are microphones on every side of the camera. So the X4 should be able to record audio no matter which direction it's coming from. On the front side is the touch screen and this touch screen is slightly bigger than the touch screen of the X3. So that's definitely a welcome improvement. And likewise, it has the same buttons beneath the touch screen being the record button and a shooting shortcuts button next to that. The screen is just as easy to use as before and the resolution is really nice. At the bottom, you'll find a one quarter inch tripod mount. Now for the big question, I know a lot of you will be asking, does it have replaceable lenses? Well, the answer is no, but they have added this ring around the lens and this this allows lens guards to very easily clip in and out. Inside the camera box, you'll get these lens guards completely free, which are very easy to clip on. It's literally just put them on, rotate, and it will attach. So if you find yourself in a serious accident and you smash your camera down on the ground really hard, it still may penetrate through the plastic lens guard. However, these should cover you in most situations. Now, in terms of lens guards, there are two different options. There are the standard lens guards that come free in the box and this is what they look like. You can't really tell that they're there. Even when I spin the camera around 360 degrees, there's very little evidence of guards being there and I wouldn't say that the image quality is degraded at all. Then Insta360 are also selling separately premium lens guards. And these ones are supposed to be made of slightly better material that is supposedly scratch proof. However, from what I'm seeing here, they seem to pick up more lens flare than the standard lens guards. And as you can see by that, big circle in the middle of shot, the presence of them, especially in bright sunlight like I'm in here, is going to be noticeable. Therefore, I'd suggest sticking with the free ones that came in the box. I do have a theory as to why they're offering replaceable lens guards, but not actual replaceable lenses. And that is that one, a lens is not a cheap thing. In fact, it's one of the most expensive components of a camera. So to be able to buy a disposable lens cheaply and easily is going to be a difficult thing especially if the lens is quality to begin with, which for the most part, Insta360 lenses are. The second thing is if you did hypothetically buy a replacement lens and didn't install it correctly, the stitching of your shots is going to be completely ruined because 360 video capture relies on lenses being the perfect distance from each other. And if it was installed even slightly incorrectly, it would completely ruin the image. So that's my theory. I could be wrong, but I guess I'm just saying don't be too disappointed that it doesn't have replaceable lenses because I do think these lens guards are pretty good and they will save you in those risky situations and they are cheap and they will be cheap to replace. You will just need to be mindful of keeping them very clean because they're obviously going to be very prone to getting fingerprints on them and other smudges. Therefore, I'd really only apply them in situations that you're putting your camera at risk. So overall, I think the design of the X4 is really good. They've taken the best bits of the X3, enhanced them, made it bigger with a bigger battery, bigger screen. It's slightly thicker, so that's obviously going to affect very close distance stitching. But still, these two cameras, I can confidently say, have the two best designs of any 360 camera on the market as of early 2024. So aside from these two lens guards that come free in the box of the X4, you'll also get this neoprene pouch that has a zip 
for easy storage and safety of your camera, USB-C to USB-C cable, lens cloth, manuals, as well as this protective case that clips onto the X4 to give it an extra layer of protection, at least on one side. This obviously won't protect the lens though, or the screen. So personally, I don't see myself using it. Now, since the design of the X4 is a little bit different to the design of the X3, this means that any accessories that were made for the X3 are not going to fit on the X4 due to it being both taller and thicker. So it does come with a new line of accessories like the quick reader that was made specifically for the design of the X4, mic adapter, spare battery, lens cap, wind mic muff, that sounded wrong, and utility frame. So yeah, if you own an X3 and you've got a bunch of accessories for it, I'm sorry to say, but they're not going to work on the X4. The generic accessories will, like selfie sticks, SD cards, anything that isn't specifically tailored to the design of the actual camera will fit, but anything else like these ones here, you're gonna need to rebuy it for the X4. Speaking of accessories, if you want the full list of 360 video accessories that I use on my shoots with my various Insta360 cameras, I wrote a completely free guide that has all of my latest recommendations from selfie sticks to camera bags to editing software. Regardless of whichever 360 camera you own, you'll find some great accessories in there. So feel free to download the guide completely free down below. Now, just like the X3, the X4 also has an f1.9 aperture and a half inch sensor. And these are two big factors that would normally differentiate two cameras. However, Insta360 have clearly done something internally. I don't fully understand all the technical camera components, but from what I've seen in the difference between 8K and 5.7K, it's noticeable, which leads me to the question of just how good is the 8K video quality from the X4? And do you even need 8K? Well, to give you an idea, here's a side-by-side -side at extreme zoom level of a 5.7K video next to an 8K video. While it's not a night and day difference, you would say the right side is definitely sharper. And when you're shooting 360 video and reframing it, you're essentially punching in. And the more quality a camera has, the more you can punch in without it being noticeably blurry. Here it is next to the X3 and 1RS 1 inch, both shooting 5.7K. While from this wide perspective, there isn't too much of a difference in sharpness. You would say that they're roughly all about equal with the 1 inch being slightly higher contrast. If you punch in though, and keep in mind that this is a really high level of zoom here, so of course the image is gonna look a bit grainy and low quality, but from looking at that building in the background, it does look sharper with the X4. You can see the grid lines of the windows of the building are more defined, as well as various other details around the image. One thing I will say though, is that due to the one inch sensor of the One RS one inch, it's able to capture better contrast consistently from top to bottom. And as a result, you can see more detail at the bottom in the water. And overall that extra contrast gives it a slightly sharper feeling than 5.7K would suggest. Therefore, in terms of sharpness, I'd rate the One RS one inch and the X4 about even. Here I am moving with the camera and the X4 and One RS one inch definitely do look better than the X3. The colors are better, the contrast is better, and the sharpness around my glasses, around my face, and the background as well. And I'd also say that the dynamic range is better with both cameras on the right, with the sun being more under control, and the X4 having less contrast, and the One RS one inch having more contrast. So it's almost like the X4 is the action camera version of the One RS one inch, which was considered to be a more high-end camera that you would use for more staged shoots, not necessarily action, but static scenes where there's not a lot of movement. And I've noticed that the X4 also seems to be capturing skin tones even better than the other two, with more consistent dynamic range in the shadowy areas of the shot. Still though, I'd rate the X4 and One RS one inch about even in terms of overall dynamic range and sharpness, which just goes to show you that sensor size does matter and that a one inch sensor of the One RS one inch at 5.7K looks very similar to a half inch sensor with the X4 
4 at 8K. I'm not sure exactly how they're getting 8K with the X4, whether it's slightly interpolated or whether it's due to something else internally within the camera. And while I would say that there is an improvement in the sharpness and this 8K, it's not as significant as a whole 2.3K extra would imply. Also keeping in mind that when I say 8K, it means we're starting with 8K as the whole 360 video. And then when we reframe, that's obviously going to be a lot lower quality than the full 8K. With 5.7K, that normally translates to about 1080p. With 8K, I'd say it doesn't feel like 4K and it doesn't feel like 1080p. I'd say it's somewhere in the middle, about 3K. And that's definitely enough resolution, especially for fun action shots. Now the new spec of the X4 is that it shoots 5.7K at 60 FPS. While that may not sound like that much of a difference from 5.7K 30 like we had before, the difference is actually quite significant because with double the amount of frames that you're capturing overall, movement feels that extra bit lifelike, especially if you're using 360 cameras for VR, where you've got a headset on, you're looking around, and lower frame rates can look really unrealistic in VR. Whereas the jump to 60 FPS is a huge one and makes movement in your scene that extra bit more lifelike. Just like this video here that you're looking at is 50 FPS. I'm not shooting at 25 or 30. This is 50 and I like to shoot at 50 because it is more lifelike. From your perspective watching this video, it feels more like I'm actually sitting there in front of you and things are moving around at the same speed they would in real life. Whereas 25 and 30 FPS, there's a noticeable jitter in between frames across every second of your video. When you see the difference between the two, suddenly you realize how much better shots look at 60 FPS, or at least more realistic. You don't always need to shoot at 60 FPS, but it's a good option for any kind of scene that you want to capture with a strong sense of realism. X4's also got some new upgraded resolutions for slow motion. It shoots 4K 100 360 video and 5.7K 120 FPS bullet time, which is that spinny effect where you twirl the camera around in slow motion and reframe it back towards you, which is a cool upgrade, but who shoots bullet time? It's fun once, but you're only gonna use it once and then you get bored of it. I will say though that one area I was pleasantly surprised with with the X4 is low light. Here I put the three Insta360 cameras side by side in low light in auto mode. And I had a feeling that with the one inch sensor of the One RS one inch that it would annihilate the other two cameras like it does with every other camera it goes against. However, in these shots, I can't believe I'm saying it, but the X4 looks way better than both of them. Not only does it seem to have less grain, but my face is also way better defined and the overhead lights are also far less obtrusive and causing ugly lens flares. Keep in mind that this is only one single test and I could be wrong about this, but to me, it looks like the X4 is the best choice for low light shots due to what we're seeing here. The X4 also has single lens mode where it can shoot up to 4K 60, which which is good, I guess. However, not if you make the same mistake I did, which was shooting in the ultra wide field of view perspective, as you can see here. And the reason I did it was because I thought you could change it later in editing. However, it turns out you can't. So you'll need to make sure when filming single lens shots with the X4, that you choose your field of view before you press the record button. So by tapping this button here, you can switch between action view and a more normal vlogging perspective, where it's not as distorted around the edges. It's also got me mode at 4K 30 FPS and 2.7K 120 FPS, which is where the camera basically reframes towards the selfie stick if you hold it out in front of you. Personally, I'm not a fan of these whole single lens options because it takes away the benefit of shooting with a 360 camera, which is shoot first, point later. And if you're capturing a full 360 degree field of view with 8K resolution, why would you want to lock it in while you're filming and not choose it later? Since you're more or less ending up with the exact same resolution, whether you shot in 360 or in single lens mode. However, I'm sure there's some use cases. I'm not sure what they are, but anyway, the more features, the better. Despite being a thicker camera, the stitching of the X4 is still pretty decent. And even with this very early stage firmware that I'm using, it's stitching my shots well enough. 
course, if you move too close to it and you're standing directly in the stitch line, which I absolutely wouldn't recommend doing, that's when it's going to be noticeable. However, if you keep a distance of at least three feet, then there shouldn't be any noticeable stitching issues. Now, there are really so many features of the X4 that make it a fantastic all around camera like active HDR, it's waterproof to 10 meters. They've added gesture control. You can cancel a live recording. It does 11K time lapses. There's so much stuff. If you want the full list of tech specs and features, then definitely follow the link below to check out the product page where you'll see absolutely everything. However, in this video, I'm gonna try my best to just stick to the main things that are make or break. Potentially the biggest one being the price. I find the price point to be an interesting one. $500 is more expensive than the average action camera and not quite expensive enough to be considered a professional camera. So it's clearly targeted at semi-professional users. Maybe you want to take the camera on holiday, get some happy snaps, but with really high quality at a higher expense. So I guess you could say it's not for total beginners. For beginners, the X3 is obviously going to be the better choice at the lower price point. But same time, $500 is somewhat affordable if you've got money to spend on gadgets. So yeah, it's an interesting price point. I don't think I was anticipating it, but for 8K in your pocket, you've just got to remember that it's 8K and it's got all the benefits that Insta360 cameras come with. So for all that stuff in one, I think $500 is actually a good price point. Hmm, so the sound quality was not great at all. I didn't even notice that background noise while I was filming that last shot. But then when I played it back in Insta360 Studio, I find the price point to be an interesting one. Wow, that was more or less unusable. While the voice focus filter helped, I still wouldn't use the inbuilt audio of the X4. And instead, I'd recommend you either record sound professionally through a professional mic setup, or do what I did, use CapCut and the amazing voice isolation feature, which is literally just one click of a button. And I was instantly able to transform that crappy audio into a studio level recording with no background noise at all. CapCut is free to use and it's truly incredible. So much so that my next online course is going to be about CapCut and it will be coming in the next two weeks. So be sure to stay tuned if you wanna learn more about that. For photos and virtual tours, again, the X4, just like the X3, shoots 72 megapixel photos with pure shot HDR mode, and the results are decent quality and good enough to charge for if you wanted to use the X4 for virtual tours for small to medium sized clients. Then of course, for casual 360 photos, it will be more than good enough. The next extremely important question that I know you've got is does the X4 overheat? The answer is unfortunately, yes, it does. Because it shoots 8K and it's so small that it could fit in your pocket, it's really a lot to ask from a small camera to not get hot and potentially overheat. However, it will record for a substantial enough amount of time. I was able to get over 27 minutes of 8K recording in my office here, which was roughly 29 degrees Celsius. And at the 27 minute mark, it stopped. I did find it interesting that in the 8K recording screen that it warns you about overheating and for best results to be moving with the camera or be around wind, which will obviously naturally cool the camera down but it's like Insta360 are acknowledging that the camera overheats and to only use 8K sparingly or for shorter recordings. So I'd say if you are going to record longer than about 20 minutes, that's when you'd want to use 5.7K so it doesn't overheat because with 5.7K you could record for a very long time. And while this is annoying, it also is realistic. There aren't too many cameras out right now that can film for a long time in 8K especially with the small form factor. We did have another camera a few years ago that was a pocket-sized 360 camera that shot 8K. Do you remember it? It was the KuCam 8K. And while that one promised a lot, it also had the same overheating issue, except it overheated way faster. I'm talking within five to 10 minutes. And not only would it overheat, but as soon as it got hot, the lenses would go out of focus and your shots would be blurry, totally negating the whole sharpness you would get with 8K, which is why that camera didn't really take off and they ended up taking a step backwards back to 5.7K to get all the internal mechanisms and sensors and processes 
working optimally to keep camera temperatures down. I guess I add that point to illustrate that progress is being made with 8K. We can now shoot for a lot longer and cameras generally have more stability even at hot temperatures. Next, I wanna to touch really quickly on the editing workflow of this 8K footage. So far, I found it to be good. Insta360 uses low resolution proxies in both its mobile app and desktop software, where you basically edit and reframe a lower quality file. Then when you wanna export, it applies the settings and edits you made to the high quality file without slowing down your computer in the process. I can say that it's performed well for me on my iPhone. I've got the latest iPhone and a somewhat new Mac Studio. However, I can't promise that it's going to perform well on all devices or computers. A lot of people often use an old phone or an old computer and they don't understand why high quality video won't work for them. And this is just a reality of buying an 8K camera is you're going to need 8K capable hardware to edit it, even with the proxies. So only consider buying the X4 if you have a phone and a computer from the last couple of years, because 8K is really high resolution and a lot of phones and computers won't be able to handle it. Now I'm sure at this point, you've watched a whole bunch of X4 reviews. Some of them may be sponsored, others not, as well as videos from Insta360 themselves that make the X4 look like the greatest camera ever made. I just wanna remind you that some of these videos are biased or they overhype the camera to look like it's substantially better than it really is. In reality, I'd say the X4 is about a 10 to 20% improvement upon the X3. It's slightly sharper, it's better in low light, it's got more features overall, and I totally would recommend buying it. However, the X3 also is still a good camera. I just wanna stress this. If you're considering a 360 camera, don't rule out the X3 because it's still relevant in 2024. And I can see Insta360 have also acknowledged this, that they're going to keep the X3 line of cameras going for a few years to come. And they've reduced the price now to $399. So there is a $100 difference between the two. If you want the extra quality and extra features, go the X4. If you're happy enough with the X3 and the features and quality of it, then I would absolutely still consider it. As I would the One RS one inch, while I'd say now it doesn't have as much of an edge since the X4 is really good at low light, which is one of the one inch's strengths, I'd say the one inch is the right choice for anyone shooting a bit of 360 video and 360 photos because this is a fantastic virtual tour camera while the X3 and X4 cameras aren't quite as good on the 360 photo side of things. However, the 360 video, the X4 is seemingly as good as the One RS one inch. Therefore, if you only shoot 360 video, then this is going to be the obvious choice. And it's also cheaper, so definitely consider it. If you own the one inch already, I probably wouldn't recommend upgrading to the X4 since the quality is going to be roughly the same. The photos won't quite be as good. The only advantage I can think of really are the enhanced enhanced shooting modes like 5.7K60 was really nice, as well as the slow motion options. But aside from that, I would still stick with the one inch if you own it already. And likewise, I wouldn't upgrade from the X3 to the X4 unless you like those features like the 8K, the 5.7K60, and the slightly bigger battery. You can find links to all cameras I mentioned in this video down below. What are your thoughts on the X4? Yay or nay? let me know down below. And if you are planning on buying the X4 or you currently own another Insta360 camera, Insta360 have just released a brand new version of Insta360 Studio, which is the biggest update it's received in many, many years. If you're not using it yet and you wanna find out what the main new features are, then check out this video here to get my full list of my top 10 favorite features.